Uh, I, I think sometimes the debate about the pipeline confuses everybody about what the real issue is. I think it's carbon density. Um, I've taken my time with a statement, not a question. Uh, Senator Markey, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, very much. Um, we're talking about the dirtiest oil in the world coming through the United States, almost using us as a straw, bringing it down to Port Arthur, Texas, and then exporting that oil around the world. Where's the advantage for the United States to export oil out of the United States, you know, with no restrictions on it? Chamber of Commerce opposes any restrictions on where the oil can go. You know, they say here, well, we have to do everything we can to, do, to help energy independence in North America. But when you say, how about a restriction on taking all this oil and making sure it stays here in America? Oh, no, they say. Oh, no. And by the way, they also support exportation of American natural gas. Yeah, do that too, they say. Okay. But meanwhile, we're sending hundreds of thousands of young men over to the Middle East. And we know what they're over there for. We know at the core, it's oil. Oil is fueling the revolutions over there. Oil that we import into the United States. By the way, right now, we import. We import in the United States 6.3 million barrels of oil a day. 6.3 million barrels. That's our Achilles heel. That makes us weak. And so what does this proposal say? Take the dirtiest oil in the world for Canada, build a pipeline, have the U.S. take all the environmental risks, bring it down to Port Arthur, Texas, and then export it. By the way, we're having a big debate here yesterday about exporting natural gas, the natural gas that could be used to move our vehicles from oil, which emit more greenhouse gases, over to natural gas and have it be here in the United States. What do the people uh, who, uh, who are on this committee say? Well, we should start exporting our natural gas too. Well, we already export our young men and women over to the Middle East so that we can protect imports. We, we don't have self-sufficiency in natural gas in the United States. We import it. We don't have self-sufficiency in oil. We import it. So this is a national security issue. It's an economic issue. It's a manufacturing issue. It's a climate change issue. Now, I heard the senator from Tennessee say earlier that, uh, talking to Mr. Brune, that there was a bill that he supported that was utterly ridiculous. I assume he's talking about the Waxman Markey bill in the House. <laughs> I didn't take it personal. But I like the company I'm with. I'm like the company I'm with with that bill. We had the Edison Electric Institute endorse it. The Nuclear Energy Institute endorse it. General Electric, Dow Chemical, DuPont, Johnson Controls, United Auto Workers, United Steel Workers, Dow, Dow Corning, Applied Materials, Utility Workers, all the way down the line. We had industry on our side. Okay? Chamber of Commerce wasn't with us. No question about it. But I like who we had. I don't think the Edison Electric Institute was utterly ridiculous. Okay? I think they understood where we have to go to protect the climate, an 80% reduction in greenhouse gases by the year 2050. Huh? And so this just is a further extension of what's going on. The oil industry is pushing to reverse four decades of law prohibiting the export of American crude oil so that our crude oil can be shipped to China. There's a crude oil ban right now. They want to lift it. As we debated here yesterday, the natural gas Industry is pushing to use the crisis in Ukraine as a basis for unleashing natural gas exports to China, because that's where it's going. It's 15 bucks in China they pay for it, only 10 bucks in Europe. Where do you think ExxonMobil's gonna send it? To China. The mantra, the mantra of the Chamber of Commerce from five years ago, drill here, drill now, pay less, has morphed into drill here, export to China, pay more here in the United States as we export our own natural resources. Huh? That's what it's morphed into. And we're supposed to accept it as though somehow or other we're in an Orwellian 1984 where you can just change all the language. Now it's better for us to export this. And this Keystone pipeline down to Port Arthur, Texas, to export it? Well, we take all the environmental risks while the planet takes environmental risks. That's utterly ridiculous. It just is. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we have a huge debate here, and I thank everyone who is here and uh, participating, and I apologize for the roll calls which are on the uh, floor right now, but, you know, the senator from Wisconsin, he raised a question earlier about higher energy prices and what it would do to our manufacturing sector. Well, this natural gas export issue dwarfs anything we're talking about here today. 
You know, the Energy Information Agency said that if we allow for an export, just one more terminal is approved that it would lead to a $62 billion increase in costs for American consumers per year. That'll just devastate this return of manufacturing from China, from other countries to our own shores. Just devastate that revolution. There's only two major costs in manufacturing, labor, energy. So we're here debating these issues as though they're unrelated to the real economy that we live in, but also the responsibility that the United States has to be the leader in climate change issues. I mean, the world is looking at us, you know? They're saying, you can't preach temperance from a bar stool. You've got to be lowering your greenhouse gases, not increasing them. You've got to show that you are serious about this. Uh, and I think we had an incredible corporate coalition who were ready to get serious about it, uh, that then was stymied over here in the Senate back in 2009 and 2010. So I guess what I would ask from you, um, uh, Ms. Hobart, would you support, as part of this Keystone approval, a ban on any of this oil leaving the United States so that, in your own words, we can have North American energy independence. Would you support that going in as part of the language? Thank you very much for the question, because I think it's very important to understand the contractual part of this pipeline. 100 percent of that oil is under contract to refineries to refine it here in the United States. So therefore, no molecules have the ability to be exported in their raw so, and as crude so, oil. And again, here's the bottom line on all this, okay? It's great. It's great. Just so we understand, this is in the hands of the oil companies, okay? It's all in the hands of the oil companies. Whether we talk about natural gas exports, it's not going to Ukraine, it's going to China. 15 bucks versus 10 bucks. You don't have to go to Harvard Business School to take a 50% markup to send it to China, huh? So that's really what this whole debate's about. It's an oil company agenda, uh, and they just want to refine it and send it around the world. Well, we need it here in America. We need the low price oil if we're going to do it. If we're going to take all the environmental risks, if we're going to uh, raise the risks of asthma and climate change and uh, damage out, you know, leaks out of the pipeline, the least that we should be able to say to the oil industry, keep that oil here. Uh, and that refined product um, uh, could be, um, in fact, kept here because right now there's no restrictions on it being kept here. We have a restriction on crude oil being exported. We could, we could put a restriction on that uh, refined product being exported. So it would be lower priced in Boston, lower price in communities all across America that they could use it uh, for their purposes. So that's why I'm going to be introducing legislation today to ensure that the Keystone pipeline, if it is approved, that oil has to stay in the United States. We should not be a middleman to transport the dirtiest oil uh, in the world to the thirstiest foreign nations who are our economic rivals. I mean, that just fails the test on so many different levels, national security, economic, and environmental, okay, that it just makes no sense. So I'm going to file that legislation so we have a vote on that. And then all the ads that we see on Sunday morning and all the talk shows funded by the American Petroleum Industry, Canada, the United States, Keystone Pipeline, North American Energy Independence. Well, let's either hold, vote for this amendment or stop running those ads, because those ads are deceptive. If you don't want that oil to stay in the United States, then what's the point of us participating in this, okay? What's the point? What is the point? These young men and women are over there. They're serving our country. They take great risk every single day. The least that we should have is a policy that squares up what we do here with what we're expecting those young men and women to do overseas. So let's not export this oil, or otherwise we have to continue to export young men and women. We're importing 6.3 million barrels of oil a day. So let's just make this truth in legislation, truth in treaties, huh? and make sure that we guarantee that we're protecting those that we say that we're most interested in protecting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator. Um, appreciate the uh, panel's forbearance. I think we can finish up shortly. I just want to follow on on, <clears throat> on the one question. I, I think 